Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. This is a very special edition. It's the another period reunion. We got our friend Ricky Lynn home here. Hi. And they have not My you guys friend, haven't seen each more other. More than your friend. That's true. <laughs> and you guys haven't seen each other since the end of another period. So no. this is kind of a cool <laughs> It's moment. been seven years. When did guys, that end? Five years ago? Seven, six? I don't know. Yeah. Are you guys ready to kind of Thaw, thaw your relationship yeah, yeah finally yeah. We, we wanted to do it live on on your podcast yeah well thanks for joining <laughs> me you guys so you were talking about your drama and just take it from here uh well listen ricky has been too busy to be on a tv show with me because she's on the hit show wednesday that's true number she one has a huge mm-hmm. part number one on netflix number one in the world number one in the world isn't that crazy i it's just like another period. Well, actually, <laughs> number one in the world. <laughs> number one in our hearts. Yes. Um, I actually don't think it's cra- it's funny because uh, uh, you. I remember you reacted to like, wow, it's such a hit. Wow, how cool. I'm like, it's Tim Burton. It's the Adams family. The cast is bananas. I'm not surprised at all. And you're so good in it. Thank you. Well, I've been in show business so long that I don't expect anything to work out. Right. You know. I know. I was like, no, this will also be bad. You know. <laughs> Everyone's always like, how does it feel? You wrote a book. And I'm like, it just feels like another thing I've done. I've <laughs> tried to. It's just another failure. No, it doesn't feel like a failure. No, I'm just saying the the te- my temperament is similar to Ricky's, which is like on to the next thing. Yeah. I assume everything's a lateral move unless I'm proven otherwise. Yeah. I just so heard- I'm just cu- yeah, like to keep keep. You always have to keep the motor. You never like stop. I've never stopped at the mountain and been like. <sighs> I heard have it you? described only now. <laughs> Wait, truly, today, Wednesday. Just, just in the last, yeah. It actually, is Wednesday. It actually truly. is Wednesday today, and you're celebrating. Yeah, it. but literally, like I've had that this week. I'm like, whoa. This Wait, is do crazy. you feel like energetically like, oh, I'm in a hit? Yes. Interesting. It feels different. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's I've so never interesting. Can we touch you? One. Yeah. How is it? Do what you feel is, the yeah, molecules? What does it feel her, like? her blood feels cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's because of her proximity it, to an atom. It actually feels relaxing. Um, it feels relaxing to yes. be in something popular. Yes, it does. Of well, course. If you haven't checked out this show, you should definitely watch it. I, I turned on Netflix for our kid and she immediately was like, I want to watch that. And it was Wednesday, and I said, "No, you can't watch it, right?" She no, can't it's too watch scary. It. Okay, the yeah. show's good, and you know why? I- but oh, but I want to say, if anyone's listening who has older kids, my um, my friend and her teenage daughters all love it, and it's something nice that you can watch with your uh, like older kids. I, and it's hard to find things like that. I think the reason you you're talk. so you're so good in it. Thank you. And the reason you're so good in it, obviously, as I was telling you before we started, like you and what's her name? Jenna. Jenna. Natasha. Nat- <laughs> you and Natasha. But you and Jenna have a very interesting um, kind of balanced energy. Like you you play the therapist to this kind of diabolical, gothic, evil person. And you're just so, so the her therapist, the consummate professional. Right. But your energies in, in terms of your acting are so weirdly yin yang balanced, kind of. And I think you're a, obviously a very talented actor and you're great. But also, I think it's because you, and I think this is why it leads into you being here, you're actually a very naturally good friend. You're oh, good at being you. a friend. Ricky is a great friend. She thank has you. great advice, she Thanks. really listens. And I mean, how many don't most of your friends call you for advice? Yeah, you're good at advice. Thanks. I called you actually. You give you. She's my friend and you call her for advice. (laughs) I I go to where the water is. I mean, I'm not going to not call her. I know I'm going to get good advice. I got great advice from Ricky, actually, because I I don't know if you you probably remember this. I was doing my first ever to this day uh, sex scene on on the show This Close. Mm -hmm. And I called Ricky. I go, I don't know what to do. I have a sex scene. I've never I've never even. I mean, the closest I got to anything romantic was like rejecting um, Beth Dover in another period. <laughs> I mean, I just like everything I've done has been so stupid. And this was like a hot and heavy, sincere sex scene. And Ricky gave the most hilarious advice. She goes, she goes, you know what? Talk to her about it. And um, if you get a boner, don't worry about it. That's normal. Yeah. And I, and I go, don't say anything either way. I was like, if you don't, just like, do not comment on oh, yeah. it. That, that's just, the worst. If you don't get a boner, you're like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Either way, get hard. Just no, if someone's professional, no one's thinking about it. I'm like, cause I, cause I was, cause we were talking about other stuff. And then I was like, okay, let's just let's ask the, about, let's, 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 here's the, the, the question. Most important part. Yeah. I knew in the moment that you said that there was no possible way I was getting a boner. Uh, it yeah. It doesn't would, really happen a lot. And if it does, who cares? Like, no one professional no one's going to talk about it no one's going to be offended it's just I'm like I'm just not that good of an actor. <laughs> I think you have to be such a good actor to get or 
really horny. Right. To get so into a scene where there's literally an AD and a crew surrounding you and people like... <laughs> and you're mic'd. Yeah, you're yeah. mic'd up and you're like You're writhing. wearing a loincloth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're like so in the moment where you're like, oh, this is hot. I there was, It was the least hot thing I've ever experienced in my life. Yeah. I'm definitely... Um, that it seems like it must be really hard in acting to do that. Have do you ever done it? I mean, I remember I had to like make out with John Daly once. But it's always comedy. Did you get a boner when you with, kissed Dice? <laughs> when I, and then Dice and I <laughs> had to be in a bed together. That's when he asked me to give him a massage <laughs> during the break. What did he do? Yeah, you don't do that. That's a no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, hey, I got a boner over here. You yeah. might give me a massage. No, he didn't have a boner. He was just like, hey, we got five minutes. Eh, you want to? Tell and him what you like, said. This is a great story. Oh, and I said, because um, Adrian Brody was there that day. And I said, why don't you ask Adrian Brody to give you a massage? Hey, come on. I'm not going to have uh, Adrian Brody. That's how he acted. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, crazy? Why is he Rodney Dangerfield in my impersonation? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not that good. Well, he is a great comic. Well, I just am saying that. I that's got to be so hard because it happens all the time. But like if you because it's the least sexy situation, if you happen to get one, I think it's from friction, just like something accidental or cold. No. But not even the hard on. You've no. got to like lick and like We're just, French kiss. It's so awkward. Stranger. We're just talking about how wise you are at, when it came to that comment. I was wrong. You don't well, understand, I, man. I don't have a penis. There's no friction. <laughs> so. I mean, I guess you have to start having sexual thoughts. I've I. I, I think maybe I'm wrong. No, maybe. it's so awkward. People, there's a microphone like, have right, you, <laughs> and then there's a boner like. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, have you had? Have you? You've done a lot of sex scenes. Yeah. Have you had a man become aroused in your sex scene? I don't scenes? know. It's like they've got those patches on. Like you can't really. T there's not that I re like maybe, but not. I mean, I feel just as stupid. Like, you feel so dumb. What about the idea that women fall in love when they have physical contact? I wonder if you could, if women oh, if get more. Oh, if a woman's ever fallen in love with because well, of a sex scene? Obviously, they have, for sure. In just because of a sex scene, you think? Well, just in the, well, it's not just the sex scene. You're probably acting with that person a lot. And, you know, it's like, I, I wonder if you have to, like, separate it sometimes. I, yeah, it's interesting. Or I, I always wonder if there's two people that are mutually attracted to each other, do they ever just go, you know what? Let's just actually, let's do fuck. Yeah, it's called Angelina Jolie yeah. and Brad Pitt. I was going to say, <laughs> that I like everyone in their 20s, I guess. Is that yeah. no, in, oh, I'm, no, no, I don't yeah. mean in the hotel room. I mean, they're like, let's take it all the way there. Oh, I've, heard it's, I've heard that it's happened in some movies, but I don't know if that's true. Our friend Jordan Firstman was on the podcast and he was just in a movie where there was live fucking. What? But that's more did pornography. Did he do that? Yeah, that's... Yeah. He did it. He he liked it, I think. Yeah, it was like wow. like Brown like Bunny style. Art, oh, okay. Art film style. Art, art, art porn. Art yeah. porn. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Exactly. Um, so uh, tell us about um, uh, Wednesday. How'd you get it? What happened? What was the most exciting... What's the best story you got? Oh, well, yeah. And let's just say you were in Bulgaria for Romania. 11 months. <laughs> I was in Romania for seven Truly, months. Truly, do you think... I? This is a real question. If you were in... Roma I shouldn't ask you this question because yeah. you'll get you're going to get Eastern European canceled. <laughs> Do you think you would have noticed if you were in Bulgaria versus Romania? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> I would not have noticed. No, it was great. I just I sent in a tape and then um, I was just picturing what would annoy Wednesday the most. Mm. I was like, what would she hate the most? And I'm like, oh, this like you're smiles such a and good foil for pearls her. and like yeah. I wore pearls and like a white sweater and I curled my hair and sent it in and then didn't hear anything for like four months. And then my manager called and she said, Oh, they're going to send your tape on to Netflix. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And then I got an email that said Netflix approved your tape. And I was like, cool. I didn't know that meant I got it. Oh wow. That I was I, the offer. I thought, yeah. I thought I had like a callback or something or I would test or something. It was just from and, the self tape. Yeah. And I was like, wait, that's, and then I said, and I called her a few days later. I'm like, what's happening? Like they, it, she's like, no, 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 you got it. And I was like, that's how you told me. That's so weird. <laughs> I didn't even know. Yeah, a I forwarded just, email. I just yeah. this from is Netflix so bizarre. Business affairs. I just watched jo uh, Johnny Depp's Inside the Actor Studio. Mm -hmm. That's how he got Edward Scissorhands. You did? The they sent him an email saying Netflix approved your tape. Whoa! And this is pre Netflix. <laughs> okay. So this it's a Tim Burton thing, yeah. obviously. Yeah. What's Tim Burton like? Is he cool? He's so cool. Is he goth? Um, no. I mean, he does wear black and like big glasses, but <laughs> sure. Not, I don't, he's from Burbank. He was like a skateboarder and like kind of like artistic, right? Yeah, like he's, I, I he's remember like an some, art student vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was like a, I think we went to it together, some exhibit of his early stuff when he was like a high schooler in Burbank, like at one of the art museums. Well, he was, was an animator for Disney. Oh, interesting. For, yeah. But no, he's, he's really cool. He just is like, he took us out once to some 
like billionaire's son formed a band to put on a show and we went to that like just weird experiences a, with like, a bulgarian billionaire yeah a romanian billionaire. Roma- sorry yes. I, I, you, his, you understand his my son confusion. had formed a band um to perform for tim or, or something uh-huh. and so we went to this show and they'd never played together except for that show i really admire um art artists who have like a theme or a look or a vibe that that's like consistent yeah. and i think that's really cool and and he's he's one of very few yeah who aren't yes. canceled so but my favorite part was that i worked one day a month Ooh. and then traveled the rest of the time oh, oh my god traveled around europe it yeah. was during covid and ricky was like constantly like in sweden by herself yeah. in paris by herself which is very inspiring because i think a lot of our listeners are single and kind of waiting to meet someone before they can like go off and do what they want to do and explore the world and you just did it i just did and i i'm like why did i wait so long we, like, why am I in like purgatory if I'm not in a relationship? I like I can go to Paris. Like why can't and I had a blast? Wait, you saw some of the most beautiful lockdowns of Europe. Right? <laughs> I mean, you saw you saw pandemics, ancient yes, pandemics. Yes, beautiful. it was gorgeous. No, but Ricky, you said you 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 figured out how to travel alone. Do you yeah. have any advice on that? Well, I kind of just don't go out when it's dark. I just get up early. No, I really don't because <laughs> cool. it's like I, I just go home when it's sunset. And but didn't you yeah. say you went on some like? Oh, I would go. I would do a touristy thing. Like I would go on viator or whatever and i would just like get on a bus i went to tuscany for a wine tasting and i just got on this little bus alone and then i met two girls who were also there alone and then i hung out with them in florence that's amazing so yeah i just meet people doing touristy stuff so if you do the tourist thing by yourself it's actually like as a couple it might not quite make because you're in a relationship now you might not do that But you'll find other lonely losers yes i found all the losers (laughs) in every city and it was great yeah did you um did you you weren't out trolling for european dong no, God, no. no. And, and no. where did you go by yourself? I went to Greece. Uh, I went to Sweden. Uh, I went to Paris, Florence. I went to the Arctic Circle and saw the Northern Lights like in Finland. Amazing. I went to Helsinki. I went to Budapest. I mean, I just went everywhere. I went to the um, to Tuscany and Cinque Terre. Like, I just traveled the whole time. Um, we don't, so We don't call it Cinque Terre anymore. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, Ricky, you weren't trolling for Euro Dong, no. but... If you were, yeah. which country had would you have chosen? Which country had the hottest oh, guys? Oh, yeah. I have an idea. Because I know the hottest. I know there's very hot women in Eastern Europe. The Lapland? So I'm assuming the, the men are hot there. I, I got to say Sweden. Sweden. But I, I don't know if I'm That's biased because so I'm yes, Swedish. I know. I'm like, I just saw look like you. so many really tall, gorgeous men everywhere. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. they're very Aryan. Yeah. However, they uh, all. I feel like it's the same thing as the men in... Um, where when we went to Amsterdam, it's the same. They it's, all like they 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 all know how to like um, fix your car, but also know a wine list. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. No, when I was in Stockholm, two Swedish men took me to dinner, like like friends of a friend, and I was like, wow, these are very good looking people. It sucks as a Jew to travel in that part of Europe because you're kind of, you look around at the guys and you go like, oh okay, mm-hmm. I, I get. <laughs> I kind of get what they were getting at. Here. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see how they sell my uncle, and we're like, uh-uh. Moshe. <laughs> By the way, there's a there's a well, Swedish just like perfect looking. There's a Swedish family, a gorgeous Swedish family at my child's school, but the dad legitimately doesn't wear shoes. <laughs> He's Finnish. He's They're Finnish. Even more. He's yes. Finnish, and he just walks around like it's normal because it's an outdoor school. But he just drops her off without shoes. Does on. he drive barefoot? Uh, I, yeah, I, I can't question, imagine yeah. he takes his shoes off in the car to walk the kid to <laughs> oh, that school. Would be very funny. He's like, again, in the car, we better put our shoes <laughs> yeah. on. But. but also at her last outdoor school, because we had to change her because she got older. The last one, remember there was a guy who would come with no shirt on? Oh, is that right? Yeah. Was he in shape? Yeah, but it's just like it's a They're thing. They're always in shape, I, right? I don't know. Well, you know what I noticed about Burning Man? <laughs> the guys who are naked, dong out, full on, it's too types of guys it's never average it's giganto dicks or <laughs> micro dicks you know and the micro dick is a psychological like you know what i'm gonna own it and i'm the, gonna be free and then the, the you don't need an explanation why yeah. the macro dick they're just like right. it's they an want people to see it yeah wow they were really just walking around naked oh yeah a lot of a lot of micro dicks wow. almost innies kind of like <laughs> Like thumb, top of thumb type of situations. Whoa, I've seen it all. Moshe. I didn't know it's there true. was that much nudity at Burning Man. There, there is. Yeah. Exactly why I don't ex- think it's the perfect place for a five-year-old. <laughs> why? What's wrong with nudity? Nothing. It's just like it's a, it's like a, it leads to sex. It's like a drug sex N- nudity party. Nudity leads to sex? I mean, seeing a bunch of adult penises might be strange for a five-year-old. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I guess I grew up too much of a hippie. I, 
I, I, I, saw, I feel like I saw naked people my entire childhood mm. all the time. Really? Yeah, my mom just took us everywhere. The hippies and people singing ASL renditions of Cyndi Lauper's, um, uh, oh, what's the damn song? Time After Time? Is it Time After Time? Yeah, just like these like interpretive dance performances and everybody was naked and had body hair and it did not feel sexual at all. It felt like wow. uncomfortable. <laughs> That's how it felt. Not a lot of that in Buffalo? Mm-mm, in no. the greater Buffalo no region? No nudity, no. Um, Ricky, yes. you you know, you tell me if you want to talk about this, but mm. you, for a long time, we've known you, you're like, I feel like you're like family, basically. Yeah. Uh, we're kind of like feeling like it, you weren't going to pull it off in terms of love yeah and now you're like a mom and you're in a relationship like mm. what what are you a mom to like a eight eight month old nine month nine month old yeah. i mean i want to know what shifted for you and if you feel differently because uh, it i feel like at certain points in our relationship you express you, you and ricky's fa- relationship yeah our as a <laughs> as a as a family unit yeah. ricky's like a cousin sister <laughs> she's a play cousin uh, yeah. she's a play cousin <laughs> R- you expressed almost a like doom and doom and gloom like it's never going to happen for me i'm cursed well kind it of also energy. feels like i my my point of view on it hasn't changed oh interesting. i feel you like still think you're cursed no i think it's i, I didn't ever <laughs> you should meet the guy I, in my yeah. baby i mean it's awful <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i thought i was cursed i think uh i just always think it's luck Cause some uh-huh. of the worst people I know are married. Some uh-huh. of the best people I know are single, unless they're like your extreme, like extremely messing it up. Like I think it's luck. So you never felt actually like that's what acting is like to get yes. on Wednesday. Right. That's yes. luck. That's right. luck. Like I could have booked a show that didn't go a week before. It's but nothing I, I, to do with talent. Can I just say one thing? Not nothing. It's when talent what? and luck meet. Yes, right. Yes, yeah. Yes. And I do think that there's something about the fact that right before you fell in love and had a baby, you, traveled the world and just decided you were going to live your life for yourself mm-hmm. yeah. and and do the right. things. Well, I had you, a baby on my own. Right. I, mm-hmm. You know, I just had a baby on my own and traveled the world. And but you I, weren't I, waiting I, for a partner to yeah. go no. to Helsinki with you no. of or see did. the Northern I, Lights. Yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah, I did it all by myself. And, 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 and you, and I'm not saying that made you have a relationship, but I just think like that, that, um, and, and obviously not everyone can like travel to 12 countries before yeah. they meet their person. No, but, but they can go on a road trip. People you can, can do your thing. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Well, just because I feel like we have a lot of callers that are in the position that y- you, I mean, you were successful and you have this awesome, exciting, interesting life. Mm-hmm. And then there was there was this piece of your life that you were like, damn, I just, I don't know how to make it click or whatever. Yeah. And I, so that's why I was asking is right. for the people that, uh, people that are calling in going like, I just feel like that feeling of I need to I like that idea that it's just you wait around until circumstance hits or doesn't hit. Yeah, because and you try to be the best version of you. But it just it didn't. Right. Yeah, I didn't feel I felt like I was just kept having bad luck. I just mm-hmm. kept striking out. And I was like, I don't think it's me. Like, I, I know people way worse than me who are happily married. I know like way worse meaning like they're mean or they're they have big issues and they met someone. So I'm like, feels like luck. I guess I kind of agree with you in, in, in a way with my experience with you, Natasha. Like I had this, my history with dating, I, you know, I, I, I had these ideas that I needed to make this gigantic adjustment to the person that I was or the way that I was with sex specifically yeah. in order to get myself prepared for the person. And if I didn't, if I didn't fix myself and I went to therapy for a long time to try to like fix myself and you can make an argument that that set me up. But if I didn't fix myself and change my behavior, it would never it would never happen because the only constant in my dating life was me. It wasn't right. these women. It was I was the one that was in all of these relationships. And then I so I worked so hard with diminishing returns. Like I just would be like, oh, I just I would still be kind of slutty or I'd still be just and then all of a sudden Natasha was single and we started flirting and I was like, oh, this person's awesome. I'm in. That's it. Yeah. And it didn't feel like I had made some monumental change. So maybe you're right. It's just like you it wait. It feels like it's luck. I mean, unless you're doing something, maybe you were doing something actively to mess things up before and the therapy helped. But if you're not, like, I just but, think it's luck. But I will say it's luck plus actively trying to do things that could be positive. Yes. I think my only advice is that don't be in purgatory if you're single. Live what, do, your, what do you mean by that? Like, live your life. Go to go to Paris, you know, have, have a baby. Do, don't wait. Don't put your fate in someone else's hands. If the luck doesn't work out, if it works out great. Like my first choice would have been to have a baby with someone, but I had the baby first. It just is, but it doesn't matter. Like I just don't put your life on hold. I mean, to be fair, you had the baby and almost immediately (laughs) fell into this relationship and the person you're with is 
yeah. raising the child with yes, you. Yes, yes. So, so you're, yeah. you got, yes. in the scheme of the <laughs> mathematics of what you're talking about, yeah. your luck was like sky high. True eat, pray, love. Yes, yeah, we that's, started, that's we really started dating right. two weeks before he was born. And he's like fully in. Yeah. I mean, that's even, it's, that's unusual it's, and cool. Yeah. And, yeah. I can't give that advice. Like, oh, have right. a baby on your own and then move to Romania and see what happens. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, you guys met in Romania. <laughs> Is he a count of some sort? No, no. Oh. We, we met in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Got yeah. it. On my book tour, I would go to all these different cities and every woman had the same, because I would do a and a afterwards and every woman was like, the men here suck. The men in Boston are short. They even wrote a song about it. Like everyone's just got like a different reason why. The men in Denver, like they just don't know how. And like everyone's pissed, all the women. And I just feel like it's not just, it's like men are going through something right now, but also on top of that, we're only meeting people online. So I think there's just like a lot of confusion as to like, what's the best way to go about things. And Moshe always makes fun of me because he's like, no one wants to do anything but meet people online. And that's really challenging. You right. Know? Well, the, the numbers are just going to be lower. Like, cause if you don't mm-hmm. know if you have chemistry, it's going to be, it's going to take longer probably. But I also think there's some like, there's something really sort of perfect about your circumstance even though it's an it's unusual like you're saying like what what it's the problem is not that people are single or having a hard time with love the problem is that the world gives people and i would say women even more this idea that if they don't pull it off that their lives are going to be fundamentally and uh, and epically broken and incomplete. Yeah. And and you talking about like living this very full life before you're you got in a relationship and had your kid, you were extremely busy traveling around the world on this hit, hit show. You didn't know, but auditioning, yeah. writing, doing all the yeah. dirty work, hard work like, too. So this idea that you're a failure if you don't find love is is I think it's a important message for you. To it's hear ridiculous. From you. Yeah. It's just not true. And I don't. Yeah, I didn't feel. I don't, I, I don't, I don't feel like if I wasn't in a relationship, I wouldn't feel like less of a person. Yeah. I'd feel like, oh, my luck hasn't come in in that particular area. I, I do feel like so many of our callers are calling in and going like, I would be happy, but. No, no, be happy. Yeah. Be happy. Like, don't wait. That's our advice. Be yeah. happy. And if you're not happy. Get happy. N- yeah. Get happy now. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, we've, we've demonstrated that Ricky has great advice. Uh, absolutely. So I think that we should take a call and see how she can help our listeners. Right. Yeah, that's. Are you good. ready for that? Ricky? I'm ready. Let's see what happens. Okay, now we are going to call. Speaking of happy, one Pharrell. of my Pharrell favorite Williams. places, <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. We're going to call Dylan in Phoenix. I bet Phoenix is livable in the winter. Yeah. Phoenix is nice. What? And they got good pizza. You ever? I'm going to ask one of the best. About, oh, that place was good. Yeah, right. Dylan. Hey, Dylan. What's up? Oh, well, we, we can't hear Dylan. Hold on one second. Oh, Dylan, you're muted. Dylan, while you turn your audio issues inside out, um, I'd like to talk to you about pizza. Pizzeria Bianco. Is that what it's called? Have you been there yet? Wait, I can't hear you. No, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm having him think about it. Have you eaten there? Would you say it's as good a pizza as you can get on the West Coast? That place say. was amazing. That was Phoenix? Phoenix, Arizona. Oh. One of some of the best pizza in, in these United States. When I went to Phoenix, we took a road trip to the Grand Canyon. Oh, it's so good. And so did a beautiful. helicopter ride over the Grand... See, when when Kate and I were single, we did that. That's right. We're not like, oh... You guys would losers. have the best gigs because you would go together and I then... I guess you and I could could do that, Moshe. We could and have done it. And, and you know what we <laughs> Sounds do... Sounds more fun when Ricky talks about doing with a friend, though. <laughs> well, you know, we the fun that we have that Ricky and Kate never did, I don't think. We get to fuck, yeah, too. Yeah, we would fuck after yep, the never show. Did that. You and Kate we never... would fuck right after the hot air balloon ride <laughs> or whatever we were doing. Yeah, the closest Ricky and Kate ever got to hooking up was they would stare into each other's eyes and play the kazoo at each other. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, oh, yeah, there you go. Hi, um, Dylan. How you doing? Awesome. I am fantastic. How are you guys? Oh, we're great. Good. It's Natasha, Moshe, and our friend Ricky Lindholm. Hi. Awesome. I'm, I'm such a big fan of all of you, so this is awesome. Well, Dr. Goldberg, Lillian, and Beatrice <laughs> are all in the house. What's <laughs> happening? Awesome. Well, what I actually wrote into you guys about was I was seeing a girl for about six months, um, really liked her, everything was going well, some little things kind of added up, and, and I ended up ending it. And now through counseling and, and kind of reflecting, I'm starting to have a lot of regret about ending that relationship. And mm. so I'm kind of curious your guys' thoughts on how to process it when you realize it's it's kind of on you and it's it's kind of your fault. Classic. That's a kind of classic right there. I mean, do you, does she have another boyfriend? 
She doesn't. Um, I did try to do a, a little romantic gesture and send her some flowers with a handwritten note, and that actually got me blocked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is Wait, this is not looking there. good. Wait, yeah. so what is it that was wrong? It's. It was all very minor stuff. Um, there were some issues with her family a little bit. You thought um, you could do better. A little bit, yeah, to <laughs> yeah. be honest. I don't play By the this way, podcast. No, that's what every man. That's the problem with every man right now. They kind of like in the back of their heads. They're like, what about that girl I matched with on Tinder who had a face filter on? She used Facetune and she liked me. I could get someone that hot. Well, that person doesn't exist. It's fake. I'm just saying. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't mean to yeah. like. Dylan's been chastened, right? There's, but there's also like a a male female, like this is stereotyping, but there's the male female like reactions to breakups, which are like the men are like, uh, I'm free. And then they're like, I can have sex with anyone I want. I'm okay. Uh oh, I'm all alone. And the women have the opposite. They're like, uh -huh. I'm all alone. I'm okay. Uh huh. I can have sex with anyone I want. I'm free. So oh, they go that's opposite. That's so fascinating. Yeah. So you're going to like, I'm all alone. But she probably went to it now. And she's probably, at, I'm free. Basically, Ricky's saying you should have sent those flowers within the first couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that could have really worked out yeah, for in you. In retrospect, that, I, that's probably right. should have been what I did. And it's just a stereotype, but like, it's, there's something truth. No, that's really good. It. That's really interesting. What did the note say? Um, it was kind of just me. It was pretty brief, just explaining like what's different now versus what was happening then and how things have kind of changed and my perspectives changed and I never heard back. I, I did cut you off, though. So could you say what was the issue? I, I was making a joke. You thought you could do better and you were, were honest. Like what what was the main issue if you had to say there was a core issue? It's hard because a lot of it felt like just a lot of very subtle things kind of adding up. Um, the big one at the time was. Uh, we had very different opinions on vaccines. Um, Ooh, that's <laughs> bad. That's bad. Wait, that's a big deal yeah. because that's like a worldview, and you got to share worldview. That's huge. What and what? What happened? You found out the truth about COVID, and now you're. That's why you're coming back with your tail between <laughs> your legs. No, it was no. Hard. I mean, I guess I started to think that there's like bigger issues, I guess, and mm -hmm. that's like not exactly a reason to end it with somebody. But maybe. But I'm I wrong think then. it's not that you're wrong about vaccines per se, but I think Natasha's onto something that being a vaccine skeptic, wh whichever one of you it is that was the. It's skeptic, like one of the only deal breakers. I'm, I'm vaccinated. <laughs> well, I'm the one yeah. that's vaccinated. But 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 to to kind of poke a hole in your logic, not that we're trying to get you to not like her. It's not. The vaccine thing, it's a it's like that's the tip of a worldview pers it's that it's not minor. It's not like one detail. It's like it represents that you guys kind of live and operate in different dimensions of the, the world. Reality. Kind of. Yeah. I think. I yeah. think. You probably did the right thing. I bet you who do you think's better in bed? Anti vaxxers or really hard pro vaxxer people? Ooh. I don't know. I just can't get over the fact that we're like yeah, you just need to get her back. And then as soon as we hear that she's an anti-vaxxer, <laughs> like, oh. we're all like, no, it's actually meant to be. You actually can do better. Yeah. We know this for a fact. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Well, okay. Was there anything besides that? Um, I mean, it's kind of tough. I, I had some issues with her family just because, as you can probably imagine, based on the vaccine aspect, there was a lot of uh, strong opinions in there. Um, her, her dad's garage is just wall to wall, like Trump memorabilia. And that's something that, you know, if you do get into this relationship again, these people are going to be your relatives and your people that she, and people that she listens to, it sounds like. But you aren't dating her dad, are you? No, I'm not actually. No. I mean, despite the little bit of interest there. Yeah, no, I'm just saying you're not dating her dad and, and everybody's got a an in-law with um, interesting stuff. I mean, that I don't think. Yeah, but she issue. listens to them, right? Here's what I think. Yeah, and that's, Natasha, that's kind of where my, my thought process was, was like, I don't know, can I see this, like, for the foreseeable future, these people being a part of my life? And that's kind of where I've gone back and forth of, like, does that really matter or is it much it, more? It only future? matters if she's influenced by them. And if she's influenced by them and thinks that they are speak, if she's just like, oh, my God, like, you know, this is my family, it, you know, of course you have to like figure it out and just deal with it. But if she's like influenced by them and um, uh, they're in her ear, I, 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 that's a lot. That's, I don't think that's minor. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of, and so, I mean, it's, I, 
I guess is is the point not to regret that decision and to and to just kind of move on or like it's more so kind of this guilt of like wow I really messed up that I've kind of been struggling uh, with. That's just because you're alone right now and you none of the girls are as hot as her that you're on that are on the apps right now and and I do think that. You know, like I always tell people a million times on this podcast, like making a list of things that are like your negotiable and non-negotiable. And for me, like worldview and sharing a worldview is like, like number one. And so it's like, and it's, it's, it's like having no sexual chemistry. You know, you wouldn't like try to get someone back. I, bet I don't the sex think. Was good though. I bet it was so good. <laughs> Trump dad and I back, sir. It was actually uh, one, of the, one of the other issues. So. Uh oh, oh, I was wrong. I was wrong. Okay. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Did, uh, here's what I think. I oh, wait, hold thoughts. on. So the other issues, you don't, you're not even that compatible sexually. Yeah. He, no, Ricky? No, I just was nodding. This is what I think. I, I, I'm i going to leave the whole vaccine thing aside, even though I do think that Ricky and Natasha are right. That's giant. That's not like it's. And, and again, I'm not even focusing on the fact like uh, the political fact of vaccines or not vaccines. It's more like the symbolism. It's like if you're an atheist and they're an evangelical Christian, they're, you're living in, in different in different dimensions. But but here's what I know as a man or maybe just as a person. But I think maybe, Ricky, your whole dichotomy that you set up at the beginning is really true, that that we get to this phase where you're with someone and you like them, even if there's problems, you have emotional compatibility or sexual compatibility, and then it, it, it you end it and then you get back into the dating pool. And then you start doing the thing that every single person does, which is running through person after person after person and realizing like I'm compatible with almost nobody. So then what do you start doing is you start wistfully dancing through your memories about, and you never are dancing through your memories of the bad stuff. Cause that's not the stuff you miss. Yeah. You're, you're, you're missing, you're missing compatibility. So you're only thinking about these parts of this person that made you feel alive and made you feel love and made you feel like and we're better than that person you went on a date with last night exactly and a memory a perfect memory is never going to compare with someone that you're not that you're not interested in because a person you are interested in you haven't even met that person yet so they're they're not they're out there in the dating pool somewhere the only thing you have to compare it to are the people you're meeting and not feeling compatible with so you're meeting someone and going this person ugh, nothing there and then you look back you go Oh, but what about that conversation we had right by the gigantic Trump flag? Where, you know, <laughs> and, you, and you have this like this fantasy. So you're engaged with a fantasy, and mm. and so you want to write to the fantasy and tell the fantasy that you know maybe it could have worked out. And it's 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 pure. It's like fear in reverse. It's just imagining something that could have been. You already know what could have been with them because you did it and you got it, and that's what it could have been. Also, let's not forget the most obvious part of oh, the yes. story is that she blocks you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, I, I, I do think that Moshe's right, that this maybe is a move on dot org. Move on. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I totally agree. I definitely think it's, uh, the, the bar where, where a lot of my friends hang out, we've recently started seeing her pop up there. So it's, it got a little more recent there, which is mm -hmm. why I kind of, writing it so i appreciate it guys no but it's like classic this is classic you start thinking back and everybody that you used to date becomes this like perfect person i mean I, i've done that where i'm like oh it could have been a thing i could it could have it could have but i think natasha's right you've been given a gift by the universe or uh by jesus if you're her uh <laughs> It, which is that you you took a swing at the fantasy and she blocked you. So yeah. it's almost like the universe you is tried. telling you, yeah. uh-uh, not this one. And also when someone comes along who does have your worldview, who you're compatible with, like you'll forget about hundred percent. You won't even think about it ever again. hundred percent. And I, I totally think you agree. can still be nice to her when you see her and she'll ignore you and, you know, don't try to get her attention. But if she talks to you, be nice. And that's Actually, all you can do. You could do her a favor. Be a gent. This could be a really compassionate thing. You could tell her that you have um, the mitochondria disease from the vaccine. <laughs> Tell her that. Just so that she, yeah, just be like, I, you know. It was Wait, a huge there's a heart. I mean, by the way, uh, it's it's fine <laughs> to be skeptical too. I'm very skeptical, you know, and and I've brought Moshe things that are skeptical, and 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 he oh. he gets mad when I if I like bring him something about like, oh, what about. You know, the vaccine, maybe COVID started from this gain of function thing. And I had to like make him read this article and he wouldn't read it and he didn't care and nobody cares. And I get it. But like, I'm just saying like, it's okay to be skeptical, but. This could be cool though. If you see her at the bar and you get like a walker and keep it in your car and you see her, go grab it <laughs> and tell her that the, you're dying from the vaccine and you just want one last night with her. It's in the, 
just to make you kind of like feel alive I'll, I'll again. I'll keep that as a last resort. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dylan. Well, I think this was helpful. I think this is maybe a deal breaker and um, good luck. And she already said it was a deal breaker. So yeah, you're done. Exactly. Move on. But And forgive Thank yourself. You. Forgive yourself for wistfully thinking about her because every person does it. And there's somebody out there that you're, you're just going to think is so much cooler because they definitely awesome. are. Yeah. I, right. I appreciate it, guys. And I will throw in there. I love all you guys. But Moshe, your special in Oakland was one of the first. No, 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 no. My man. Oh. Hey, hold on. Let him finish. I like this. I like <laughs> this. Well, it's really one of the ones that got me truly into stand up. Oh, so. I love that. That's beautiful. Well, as a gift to you. That's so beautiful. Um, that thank you, you said for that. saying that. <laughs> it is. It's really it's nice. Gorgeous. Oh, it's just for... so beautiful. You, have you guys had this experience, by the way? I'm sure I've talked about it on the podcast before, but I had somebody come up to me. Dylan, we're almost ready to let you go. I had somebody come up to me at, uh, in North Carolina. I was like, yeah, I watched you my whole childhood. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no, the about? best is my mom loves you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dylan, go try Pizza Bria Bianco or whatever it's called. It's the best. Awesome. Take your it's next expensive. Tinder date there yeah that'll be a real impressive one thank you guys okay bye bye bye. Bye. uh well that was helpful i think we kind of like he he was just like at the beginning he was like no they're not big things I know. Yeah. Was he was really like, funny. but then World he did a one sexual compatibility. She blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some are, little, there's, there's some little, some little minor issues. No, and I think Ricky had a great point about how women experience the. That, I never loss. heard that before, but it's so true. It's so I think it's so. And, accurate. and you had a great point about how men are just kind of reliving this like ghost. Yeah, I've had that. Totally. And I was going to tell him, well, I was going to tell him a different story, but then when he started to describe who it was, I was like, oh, cut and run. Right. But it connects to our thing about me getting like the table ready for Natasha. The one thing I think, I think that I did do that did get me ready for a relationship is I was, I was, um, in Australia at the comedy store in Sydney comedy store. And I was reading this book called the road less traveled. I've talked about it on the podcast. Before. Wait, really? Cause that's the book that made me like, I felt like made me become introspective when I read it in college. Is that true? Yeah. That's interesting. It was this, uh, this oh. book, book about love and dating and this whole thing. And one it's of very the, basic, but I had never thought of ideas. Like it that. totally changed the way I looked at, at me and my Weird. own. Dating I behavior. didn't realize that. I, I thought I talked about it before, I but did. anyway, there's a lot of things that said that really resonated with me, but the one that, that, is applicable to Dylan's situation was it said, you know, love is always an act of courage and, uh, and risk taking. And I realized that in my dating life, every time courage was required, I bounced, I I was out, you know, like every time I felt uncomfortable, I was like, rip cord, let me get out of here. Wait, what did he say? The love is, is always an act of like courage and Mm. risk taking. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, I contacted an old love that i'd had this like back and forth thing with and i'd hurt her through my own inability to show up for the relationship you know a bunch of different times like and i cared about her i just couldn't answer the bell and she was always like down and i was always like i i want to but i just can't so i finally go courage that's what i didn't have i i didn't take the courageous step like with her i would leave so i contacted her in australia i was like i'd like to talk to you when i get home and at first she was very receptive and then i don't know maybe she thought about it or thought about what uh, I, how i treated her by the time i got home she was like extremely cold when i finally so you're saying ricky's in, ricky was right it happened the same way for you where, well, where she was like i'm free of you just around the time you went exactly no exactly and why does that but, happen but that was okay because i even though i she rejected me and it was it hurt and it was offensive actually i felt offended now I think, oh, it was taking that step, even though she was clearly not the, obviously not the one for me. It, I needed to take one big courageous step. That's what I was going to tell him. You can write a letter saying your feelings because it's sometimes good just to do it. But I don't think this is the right person to do that with. But I do think that that it wasn't not being a slut, but it was taking one courageous step and going, I would, I would commit to you. Are you yeah. down? And the fact that he's so introspective and like thinks about people and, and would send a handwritten letter like that, he's going to meet someone so yeah, fast. Yeah. Like uh, that's a gem. Like people, someone's going to. Yeah, that's so yeah. sweet. That's a vaccinated gem right yeah. there. <laughs> okay, we have one more caller. We don't have a lot of time. So let's call Kylie in Los Angeles. Hey, Kylie. Hi. Hi, Kylie. It's How you Natasha, doing? Moshe, and our friend Ricky Lindholm. Hi. Hi. Uh, you look like you might have listened to goth music when you were a teen. Have you watched um, Netflix's Wednesday yet? I 
Yes, I have. I watched it all in one night. Uh, well, nice. you watched the whole thing in one night, all the all the episodes. Yeah, I was like planning to watch it. Like it's been on my like I knew it was coming out. That sounds so like, fun. I don't think I've ever done that. How long does that take? Um, the amount of uh, episodes eight times hours. an hour. So you just lay in That's bed for eight, eight hours. hours. I've never done that before. Is this? Is she literally introducing you to, to the concept <laughs> of going on a, a binge? And Netflix binge and chill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm always. I'm like a. I, it's hard for me to sit down and watch things, but that's really impressive. Kylie, you must be fucking panicking right now to be this close to Ricky. <laughs> I mean, what was your what was your favorite thing about her performance? Let's start there, and then we'll get your. Uh, okay, it's fine. Um, how can we help? Okay, so my manager texted me at like three four thirty a.m. and was like, "I love you." Oh my god! Uh, Wait, what do you do really uh, quickly? Yeah, where do you work? Um, my like cr- like survival job is I'm a bartender. It's so your manager ma- from uh, the bar mm-hmm. and professed their love for you. Yes, he's like fifty. Whoa, oh, that no. is disgusting that he's fifty. What, what do you mean? I'm just, just in kidding. life? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but how old are you? I'm 26. Okay, we found the disgusting yeah. part. Yeah. Well, I mean, the disgusting part is he's her manager. I know. I know. And he's like drunk, probably. Do you think he's intoxicated? Of course. A hundred percent. Yeah, and he's saying that, and I and I think that. Okay, well, keep going with the story, I guess. I think that more. was it. <laughs> yeah, so I just haven't responded. I'm a bad texter, anyways, so I don't know if he even realized it. I would not respond. I would not respond and I wouldn't mention it and hope everyone forgets about it. See, that's interesting because I have a different approach. I have a different Mm -hmm. opinion too. Mm -hmm. What is yours, Natasha? Mine is that this is really hard, but if there is a world where you could um, take him aside and say, hey, can I talk to you for a second? Um, I didn't appreciate that text and I want us to have a professional relationship and don't let it happen again. Oh, you're right. And then just go back to your job and be really nice and, and say, and this is like, these are like gifts for you in the universe to like, try to like really own yourself. And I think Mm. that as a woman and you're hot and you know, it's like, I'm sure you dress cute at work and you're flirty or whatever. I mean, it's like, that's kind of part of the job sometimes. And I think that just really having those boundaries with people like that, because there's no way it's something like that's not going to happen again. And people like that can also think, well, they didn't say no. So I guess I'll do it again. You're right. Oh, he's Southern. I don't know. I'm just saying like, I, I, it's, it's such a great opportunity to like be impressed with yourself because if you can like do it, you're going to feel so, I mean, if you have to imagine what's the worst scenario, the worst scenario is he's like, well, you can't talk to me like that. Uh, you, uh, you're fired. Oh, all you, gotta, guess. all you gotta do is press record on the voice memo <laughs> on your iPhone. Actually, you, you should have, yeah, I was gonna say, you should have a recording device on if you're gonna do that. Absolutely. Because I'm always scared of like physical retaliation mm-hmm. no, and like I, alcohol, like bars. Like, I just, I, I, what's it, I possum. Like, I just like wait for danger to pass. Well, I agree with it's, Ricky that you should, you're correct, but you shouldn't text him this or text him, I need to uh, talk to I you. Agree. You wait till you're at work, you wait for a slow time, you ask him to talk privately so that no one overhears you because that is like a little you know it's like you're just trying to be respectful and if he's not respectful then you can do something else but i i think that it's going to be hard and you just do you have any any advice like I, what are the two you could have a script what i have are the, a third because it should be short i like what you're saying yeah what you're yours saying was, is right yours I mean, was perfect wait kylie do you think you're capable of doing something i've done like this that? twice in my life by the way and this do you want to do that i mean i'm capable of doing that I just started the job like I'm um, maybe mm. two months ago. I mean, have you so thought I, about the fact that maybe you're just a little too loving? Like <laughs> if you've only been there two months and he's in love with you already, like maybe it's you. You know what I mean? I think part of the problem is I'm the exact opposite. So I'm very like, I'm sober. So I don't even drink at the bar. So I'm like, I'm in and out. Like, let's get to work and get out. You're professional at your job. Yeah, yeah. that's good. He yeah. sounds yeah, like yeah, a, right. She's yeah. like, I'm the exact opposite. She's like, I'm sober at work. I, I do my I job. I go to work. I just work. I don't ever profess my love to my coworkers. Right. Yeah. Here's here's the word you want to use: inappropriate. If you can make that word happen in your two sentences to him, hey, I don't want to take up much of your time, but I just want you to know you texted me the other night. It was completely inappropriate. And I want this is a working relationship and I'll respect you and you respect me. That's, That's all nice. I want to say. That's so And then good. go. Yeah. I, I, by the way, this is like, I know what she should do, but I'm, this is stuff is very hard to so do. Hard. So I have hard. to do something like this next week and I'm like gearing up for it. So I'm just like, because it's... <laughs> 
But at first you're like, you want to say like, listen, I don't appreciate, or, you know, you think of all the things that you want to add to it, but you just have to make it very plain. And I think that, you know, the, you just have to think of what your buzzword is, which is inappropriate. I think, yeah, that's interesting. And what I love you. I mean, he doesn't crazy. know you. But he's I, drunk. He's your boss. There is something to what Ricky's saying. Not that you should be scared of this, Carly. But you're right, Ricky, that when it comes to... And this is why it sucks so hard sometimes walking through the world, I can only imagine, as a woman. Because you do... There is a bigger fear. If a woman did this to me, I would be able to have this conversation without any second doubt of like, what if this person's unstable? And what if I'm this gonna... person comes after me physically? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I get it. And I think that if this isn't someone that you'd have to see every day at your job, maybe you could ignore it. But I think that because he's like just waiting for like non addressing to him could mean mm -hmm. acquiescing. I mean, it's so not good that he did that and gross. But here's, I have the third option for you. Okay. I mean, there's obviously the fourth option, which would be find a new job, which sucks at the. No, the, you shouldn't have to do that. I, you shouldn't yeah, have to do that. Right. It's hard you, to find a job. You're 100% yeah. right. You shouldn't have to do that. But, but that is in the in the zone of just like, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm going to take myself out of the. But you're right. It's not fair. It, it's not fair. Which is why we've come to the fourth option. Never mention the text. Go in, pull them aside, and say, Hey, I got your text. I'd like a raise. <laughs> <laughs> Bar you don't give ra I mean bartenders get their tips so they're I'm just not saying even like, it'd be kind of a fun thing to just be, yeah, yeah just like I would like a raise right but no I think Natasha's the right yeah. what do you want to do about it I mean I don't fear any like physical retaliation he's like a very tiny I thought he was gay for like up until this moment mm -hmm. so like not very I'm not scared of him so I think I could initially like be like hey that was kind of inappropriate no, He's not kind of. Get rid of kind of. Yeah. That was inappropriate. It, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, simple. Two sentences. That was inappropriate. Please don't let it happen again. I like this job. This is a professional relationship. Oof. Thank you. Yeah, I would, I would record it too. Just I would in case. do for sure. Voice and it's going to be that. so funny how he responds. I mean, he's probably going to be like, like, oh, sorry. I was drunk. I didn't mean a little like. And then you just, never do it And again. then don't say don't worry about it. Just say, okay, well, I just had to, go get back that, to work. had to get that off my chest or I don't know, you know, just but be then at the simple. End, at the end, always double back and say, sorry. <laughs> for sure say sorry. No, it's end. hard. I told you my, my, my pre, the preschool teacher for my kid who's five, they're like, she's saying sorry all the time and uh, I think she might be getting it from you and, and I was like, sorry. I mean, it was like, I, sorry to her, to I, the I just teacher. say it constantly. And then I noticed my, we were like biking with my kid and every time she would like, or she was on her scooter, every time her leg would slip, she'd be like, sorry. And right. I was like, don't, you don't have to be sorry. And then I realized I was saying it and she's just modeling mm. me. And it's not just me and my daughter. It's like a female thing. And I think we're just very used to that, having to do that. And here's what I would say. I would say you go to him and you say, that felt that was inappropriate. I want a working relationship. Sorry. Is that weird to ask? Oh, God, I'm so weird. And then just say, <laughs> you do whatever it. you want. Kind never of mind. You never mind. Sorry, you I brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> here's Text your, me whenever you want. Here's your, your other mantra besides, I love you too. <laughs> besides inappropriate, your other mantra is like making it brief. Get get out of there. So it's like that's the uh, don't engage. I you don't want to engage him in a conversation about his feelings, about his actions, about anything. You're just there to tell him two sentences. But if you text it, it could be like that's engaging. No, more. and I think Natasha's 100% correct because you know what the message a guy like that is getting from not responding is oh cool i can do that when i get drunk i'm allowed to text kylie and and next time it'll be a dick pic and the time after you know it's not gonna and if you have that conversation it will be the end they won't it will not the behavior will not continue that's what yeah and, and i have to say like that kind of attitude i think gets people to not treat you like that sometimes mm -hmm. i think guys can smell it a little bit like when i was waitressing in a cat suit i feel like nobody ever really came on to me <laughs> but i was a fucking bitch yeah you and know you what know i what, mean honey you haven't changed that much <laughs> wait but kylie i never got from you what is it that you what do you if you hadn't called in what do you what were you thinking what are you thinking about doing i was just gonna ignore it i don't like really like he's not in the bar he just like manages it so i don't have to actually see him until like scheduling well the next schedule then you have to talk to him 
I, I I'm with Natasha because no, it's not, it's not for him. Back. It's not for the situation. It's for you Ooh. because then you have that as like your notch on your belt. And it's like, it just kind of like gives you more confidence as you go through the world. As Dr. A, as Laura a woman. over here. Yeah. I just know because I'm going through it right now. Um, all right. Well, does anyone have any closing? No, words? I love it. No, that's really good. I mean, you're Kylie, right. you're sober. You're like sober, a sober person. I mean, this is yeah. part of this is part of the work of recovery, too, is like owning your truth, mm. being real. You know, like when they talk about like making amends, it's not just about uh, apologizing. It's also about like, you know, standing up and being forthright in the world and being honest and demanding integrity and demanding respect. And, you and it deserve sucks that. that you have to give him that time and put yourself in this like awkward situation. Uh, you know, it, it sucks. But I just think it's probably better for the long run. Yeah. Ooh, I like it. Be like Wednesday or but like, I don't know, it's something, something. Be like Marilyn Manson. No, don't be like Marilyn Manson. He's the one that would have sent the text. Anyway, you get it. Some goth reference. <laughs> well, good yeah. luck, honey. Thank you. All right. We got to go. Sorry, Ricky has a baby. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Kylie. Bye. Well, well, yeah, that was really good advice. Yeah, you are Natasha, correct. You're dropping bombs over here. Yeah. I mean, that's what you should. That's what I would have done. That's what you should do. <laughs> like I like right. I, just, I like I know, ignore things and hope they I go know. away, but that's not great. I think the I best do too. Point, I mean, I Natasha, mean, uh, you guys, I'm just like this is what is hard to do. Yeah. No, Natasha's your point was the best, which is you do it for yourself because it's the right thing to do. But also, no, because it helps you become strong. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. But also, I think I'm right, which is that. If you don't do it, that guy, a guy who's inappropriate yeah. enough to send that text is going to take that as a signal of awesome. I, I trampled her boundaries. She's down. And now whenever I want to emotionally unload on that person, she's my victim. And <sighs> to my credit, I also said that. Um, OK, well, <laughs> it's nice that you uh, that you helped, though, honey. Um, OK, all right. <laughs> Actually. When you were condescending to me just then, it was inappropriate. I didn't appreciate it, and I and I need that behavior to stop. <laughs> I feel really empowered right now. Yeah, it's this just is, it's that just, for you. <laughs> it's just how men talk to everybody. Mm, no, it's not, honey. But nice try. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, Ricky, everyone's going to watch Wednesday. You're so talented. You. We're so happy to have you. You're a great friend. You have great advice, and. Um, Hope, is, is there anything else you'd like to talk about or no thanks for having anything? me it was no, really fun it's always good to have you over Thank we're like you. you know dinner and theater friends too so don't get jealous out there you know we, <laughs> we have real relationships outside of this podcast yep all right well uh thanks so much thanks for having me bye